name is Johnny, and I am really lucky because I get to spend nearly every day out exploring a few of New Zealand's marine reserves. Marine reserves are protected areas of ocean where there is no touching or taking of marine life. They have a great amount of marine biodiversity, all the way from small fish to big fish, sea sponges, mollusks, and everything in between. But most importantly, they have lots and lots of seaweed. Seaweed is really important, not just for the fish, but for us as well, because it is a great absorber of carbon dioxide, pulling it out of the atmosphere and storing it up within their leaves to be returned back to the ocean. Seaweed also has a lot of other important jobs as well. It is a great home for all of the small fish to live in until they're big enough to venture out into deeper water and leave the reef. It also provides a good food source for a lot of fish in the oceans that are vegetarian, just like the power here. These power you can see stuck to the rocks are underwater snails. They crawl along the rocks eating kelp and algae as they go. One species of kelp that's much too big for the power to eat is called bladder kelp. Bladder kelp can grow 30 meters long all the way from the ocean floor up to its surface and it makes a great underwater forest for the bigger fish to live in in a little bit deeper water. Just like these blue moki here that you can see cruising through. Some fish that live out in the deep water also use the kelp on the reef as well. Who do you think could be hiding down here? There he is. The small carpet shark. These guys are out swimming at night and during the day they swim off the sand into the reef and find themselves a nice cosy place to tuck up under the kelp where they can sleep in safety away from predators. There are a lot of curious fish in the ocean too. Like this wee blue cod. He got a bit inquisitive. Wondered what I was doing when I went down to video that carpet shark so he came in to say hello. Because they are so curious I really love going to swim with blue cod doesn't take long for them to come in, have a little bit of a look and wonder what you're doing in their territory. These two here I've been diving with for over two years and I've named them Trevor and Kevin. The way I can tell the difference is those big blue spots on their back. Each blue cod has a different type of spots and they all are a little bit like a fingerprint for a fish. That's the way we can tell them apart. These two guys here have gotten really really friendly which is pretty cool for us. It means we can go out, explore the marine reserve and have a good view of these fish. Sometimes, when we're in the water, the fish swim away from us. This is because we resemble larger predators that live in the ocean. What do you think we might look like that the fish are scared of? A snorkeler in a black wetsuit can look a lot like a male sea lion. Like this little guy here. He's not so little, probably about 400 kilograms. Marine reserves benefit seals and sea lions as well, as it gives the fish a nice safe place to breed which provides a good amount of food for these big animals. The New Zealand sea lion is one we really need to look after as well. The dwindling population of only 12,000 left unfortunately. And this big guy here, he does look really nice and cool, calm and collected. That's because he's old. Unlike this young female here who's very energetic and playful, she's coming in to have a little bit of a look about what we're doing in the water. You might have seen the two yellow tags in her fins, they are put there by members of the public who are researching the population to try and help them survive. You might be wondering what sea lions like to eat too. Down here you can see a wee fish swimming. It's a small salmon. This would have been eaten by a sea lion. Luckily though this one got away. See all the scars on his side there. Fish are really really good at healing. So he'll heal up, his scales will grow back and he'll move on to be a nice big salmon and one day swim up a river. But one of the sea lion's favourite meals is my favourite fish, which you can't see very well because they change colour to camouflage and hide in the kelp. It's the octopus. This little small guy here you can see swimming away. They can't swim very fast so they have a really unique defence mechanism. They ink. Not all of the ocean's marine life have really cool skills like the octopus, where they can shoot ink out behind them. Some of them have to resort to camouflaging because they can't ink or swim very fast at all. So what they do is they hide in areas that are the same colour as them in an attempt to stay away from other fish. Can you see what's hiding in here? Tucked in amongst the seaweed 
is a yellow seahorse. Now this is his defense mechanism. He lives in an area that is exactly the same color as him to try and hide from fish so they won't spot him. Not all fish can use their environment to camouflage, so some of them have to hide in cracks and holes in the rocks to stay safe. Just like these little critters down here. This is a nest of wee crayfish. What these little guys do is they stay tucked up in their cracks in the rock, nice and safe until it gets dark, and they'll wander out onto the seafloor, just like the carpet shark, to search for food. Just before daylight, head back to their little hole in safety. There are lots of other underwater animals that like to live in holes and caves as well. Sea sponges don't like to grow in direct sunlight, just like the blue mochi here. So while it's really sunny, they hide in the underwater caves while they wait for the sun to go away and pass back under the clouds. There you go guys, that's a little bit about the marine reserves. A few things about the species of fish we see, and a little bit about the underwater playground I'm very lucky to get to be in every single day. It is an amazing environment and I do encourage everyone to get out and have a little bit of a look in the ocean and if you can, the marine reserves too.